we're going to work more with our if else statements. Specifically, we're going to learn how to use the checkbox control uh, and how that plays into um, our if statements. I'm creating an empty forms project called Burger City. And what this is going to be is an application to help with uh, the ordering of a hamburger. Um, it's going to let you pick uh, specific ingredients. Each ingredient is going to have a cost associated with it. Now, we've worked with button controls and text box controls and labels. Uh, and really, labels and text boxes work with our string data types. Um, but there is a control that works great with when you talk about a true and false value. And that is a checkbox. Uh, I opened up my toolbox and you can find it alphabetically. It is a checkbox here. Just drag that on my form. I'm going to start. And the thing about a checkbox that makes it great is that it's either not checked or it's checked. And so what that does is it gives us a true and false value. When the checkbox is selected, it's true. When the checkbox is not selected, it's false. And the property that tells us about that is checked. Now, in my designer, uh, by default, when I throw a checkbox onto my form, it's not going to be checked. It's going to be unchecked. It's false. If you wanted to have it initially checked, it would you would set it to true, and then that's where we have it. And so, what we're going to do is I'll throw a label on here. Oops. And this will be some instructions. say please select your toppings and then we'll have a bunch of checkboxes down here for the various toppings so let's have say for example we'll do lettuce I'm gonna make my font bigger for both of these so we can see what's going on there we go okay so the naming convention for our checkboxes is not unlike what we do for text boxes, buttons, and labels. It's that three-letter prefix. For a checkbox, that three-letter prefix, whereas text box is TXT, a checkbox is going to be CHK for check. And then this one I will call lettuce. Okay, and let's at this point pretend that uh, our restaurant, you can only order a hamburger with lettuce on it. We'll create another label for our total. Do a control C, control V. And this one I will call LBL total. And now, a button for our usual submit. And I'll change the font on this so that it matches the rest of my styles. Okay, now we can add the clear and the cancel, but at this point, um, we'll get working. So. Each of these toppings is going to have a price associated with it. So let's say for our lettuce, um, we'll say that to add lettuce to your hamburger is going to be ten, uh, $1. Now, because that is something that is a fixed price, we want to have that as a constant in our application. To add constants, we would go after our public partial class because we want this to be reusable in different places. This is going to be a double uh, because it is uh, a monetary value. And we'll call this lettuce, capital letters, because it is a constant underscore to separate out the letters. And let's say lettuce cost. 
and we'll have this be one dollar. Okay. Um, now what we want is that on the button submit, I want to compute what the price is. If the lettuce is unchecked, then we would not add uh, a, a dollar to our total. And we should probably have some sort of description on here uh, what a base cost is. So I'm going to copy this label here and we'll have say all hamburgers are five dollars. There we go. So we're going to start with five dollars. So if they didn't select anything, um, we're going to have a five dollar total. If they had selected lettuce, then the total would be six dollars. So double clicking on my submit button, we're going to do our usual pseudo code. Okay, first and foremost, we need a variable to hold our total, what the total price is going to be, so we'll call that double total. And then looking at our form, um, we probably want something to track to see if this has been selected or not. Um, and what the, the candidate for that would be a boolean value. So we would call our boolean bool bln and then we can just call this bln lettuce. We want to give this an initial value and it doesn't really matter um, if it's true or false. I usually will go with false just because it's, it's think of it as a light switch being off. Um, but we're going to be populating this with our actual checkbox value. Okay get user input. Now one thing to say is our double total looking at our form all hamburgers are five dollars so instead of starting this at zero we could actually start this at five because that's going to be the minimum price regardless even if they don't order anything. Okay next up get user input. Um, what we want to get is the value from this lettuce checkbox. So we will say BLN lettuce equals CHK lettuce and the property for if a checkbox is selected or not is checked. It will be true if the checkbox was checked, false if not. Okay, and that's that's our only user input that we have on our form right now at all. So our, what's our calculation going to be? Well, we have to figure out um, what toppings to add to total. So well, what's that going to be? Well, we want to check to see if this checkbox has been checked. So that implies that we need to do some sort of test. And what we test is something we use an if statement. So if this is value is going to be true, um, then we want to add to our total. So we'll say if BLN lettuce equals true. Remember, this is our equality operator. We're testing to see if this value is true or not. If it is, then execute this code that's in between these two curly braces. So what did we decide? Well, we decided that if they do want lettuce, we're going to take the cost of the lettuce and add it to the total. So that's what this will look like. We will say double total equals, and here's something new. We can take the previous value of double total and add another value to it. So in this case, we would say lettuce cost. It takes the previous value, the existing value, which is $5, adds the price of lettuce, and then stores the result back in the original variable. And this, you're allowed to do this because how this works is that 
the right hand side of the equal sign will be evaluated first. So this will actually turn into 5 plus 1 which equals 6 and then we'll put the value back into double total. Lastly, we want to output the result. So we're going to say LBL, and we did not, LBL total, we did name it, dot text equals DBL total dot two string. Pass it the format specifier of currency. And there we go. So debug, start running it. We should clear out that output hit submit nothing has been selected so we're gonna say five dollars that's exactly what we talked about I'm gonna click that lettuce and then go back and hit submit again and now it's six click it again hit submit total is five click the lettuce submit total is six so it's working correctly and that's and that's what we wanted we'd say if boolean lettuce equals true then add that price to it. But let's do another topic. So I'm going to copy this and let's say uh, that we want some cheese. So I'm going to call this control CHK cheese and I'm going to change the text property because that's what displays also to cheese. Okay, going back into our button submit code and what do we have? Well, we have another control, so now we need another Boolean variable. So we'll call this one Boolean cheese. Have this initial value be selected to false. We added another control, so we need another assignment statement in getting our user input. So Boolean cheese equals chk cheese dot checked. Now we have another thing that we need to test. So we'll need another if statement. I'm going to say if boolean cheese equals true. Open curly brace, close curly brace. And now we need to do one of these again. But we don't have a constant for our cheese price. So we actually should go up to the top and declare another constant. And you want to do this because this way you can change the price uh, all in one spot so this one will be cheese all caps cost equals and let's have this be uh, 50 cents coming back down we'll do the same thing on this one so now we're gonna say dbl total equals dbl total plus cheese Cost. And so let's let's look and see what's happening here. Um, if they selected lettuce, remember this evaluates to five plus one. So if they did select lettuce at the end of this code block, it's going to be six dollars. And then if they selected cheese, this is going to be six plus one, and now it's going to be seven. And so we just keep incrementing the price. If they didn't select the lettuce, um, it's going to skip this whole block here, and it'll be 5. And then this will evaluate to 5 plus 1. And so we'll just keep adding on more and more ingredients. So let's see what happens. Let's run it. We're going to do both lettuce, both cheese, and now we have 650. Uh, I'm sorry, I mentioned it was $1, but it was actually 50 cents up in our constant uncheck lettuce hit submit now the price total is five dollars and fifty cents okay now I'd like to keep adding on more ingredients and we will um, but there's something that we need to talk about and that's how we're using these variables um, typically if we were to reuse this boolean in multiple spots um, it makes a lot of sense to use it but Really, if you look what we're doing, we're just making extra code here. Um, I'm declaring a Boolean variable to hold the value of the input. And then I'm coming down here and I'm just using it one time. 
Um, because this is so simple of a piece of code and it reads pretty easy, we say, okay, your checkbox was checked. Um, using these Boolean values is sort of overkill. I'm not saying that there isn't ever a place for it, but in this case, it's probably a bit of overkill. So instead of all of this, we should take our check lettuce, got checked, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to say instead of Boolean lettuce, I'm just going to use this value inside my if statement. Because this really comes out to be the same thing. Same thing with my check cheese. So I'm going to copy that control C and then control V there. So we don't really need to declare variables when you're working with a, a, a checkbox, especially because if you recall when we would get an input value from a text box, uh, if it was numeric, we would have to do all sorts of tests on it and, and we would do try parse to make sure that it was valid. A checkbox is either going to be checked or it's not checked. There's really no error checking when it comes to using a checkbox. So I can get rid of these two lines here. And I'm just going to comment them out so that we remember that that's one approach that we use. Okay, And it's going to simplify our code out. We don't really need all of that. Furthermore, let's take a look at what this expression is saying. If you remember, uh, when we put something in between the parentheses immediately following an if, uh, we would say it's a conditional statement. Uh, conditional meaning it's going to evaluate to either true or it's going to evaluate to false. And so all we need here is something that is going to turn out to be true or false. And so what are we saying? Well. Let's say that checkbox was checked. And so really what we're testing here is if true equals true. Well, that's sort of redundant because this will turn out to be true only if this side is true. So in this case, we don't need to test to see if it's true because it's already true or false right here. This by itself will evaluate out to a true or false value. And so we don't need it. It's redundant. So we can get rid of this as well. We're always looking for ways of simplifying our code out. Okay. So let's go and we'll add another one. So I'm going to right click, I'll copy this, right click and paste. And let's add, let's uh, sing for additional toppings. Let's say onions. So chk onions. Change the text on there to onions. Going into my code, I know that I'm going to need another price for onions. So I'll declare another constant. Call it onion cost and let's have onions be a quarter. Now, going into my button submit, all I have to do is I don't have to do all of these extra variable declarations. I can just add another if statement on here and say chk onions.checked Now I'll do this. In fact, I'm just going to copy this line here and paste it in. And all I have to change is the constant that it's adding to. So I'll do onion cost. And now I have what's starting to be maybe a pretty good hamburger. And we get 675. Now, because this application is so simple in terms of its interface. It sort of can get kind of tedious to expect the user to click the submit button. And also, wouldn't it be nice that um, somehow it was letting us know what our price was as we actually did it? We say, okay, keep clicking. Oh, 675, that's too much. Take the onions back off. It would be awesome if this would update in real time. So with an application like this that's not really taking any specific user input, um, we would say, wouldn't it be awesome if we could have this update in real time? And just like we can tie into events, uh, like when the user is typing inside of a text box, 
we can tie into an event that fires when someone checks a checkbox instead. And that is called the check changed event. To get that to generate, just like we do with double clicking uh, a submit button or a text box, you take your checkbox that you want and double click it. And now we have check lettuce, check change. And this is going to fire every time someone either checks this checkbox or unchecks it. And so what do we have? Well, we already have some code that does what we need it to do. Um, but it's happening on the button submit click. But we want the same thing to happen when they click the submit button or when they click on a checkbox. So what we can do is we can take all of our code that we wrote, make sure you get it in between the start, let me zoom out here, in between the start brace and the end brace. You don't want to copy those braces because that's part of the function here. So I'm going to take all of that, I'm going to copy it, and then I'll paste it into my check changed event. And so now when I go in and I click lettuce, that's one dollar, so the total is going to be six. Uncheck it, it takes it back down to five. Check it, goes to six because it's doing the whole math, it's doing all of that code every time I check the button. Uncheck it, it goes back to five. So what we really want is we want that same code to fire anytime anyone checks any of these checkboxes. And so I'm going to go in and I'm going to double click the cheese check change. I still have all that code on my clipboard, so I can do a right click and paste. It's the same code, exactly the same. Go back in, double click my onions, and I'll right click and I'll paste into that as well. So if I run it, it's going to update in real time every time someone checks a checkbox, which is great. Um, but something about all this is making me pretty uncomfortable, and that is that I have now four functions with the exact same code on it. And so that means that if I wanted to add another checkbox, uh, which I'm not going to, but if I wanted to, I'd have to add another if statement into each one of these. Um, and that's just, it's really not efficient. You're just asking for trouble. Um, so what we want is some way of, wouldn't it be great if we could reuse this code somehow? And what we've been doing up to this point is when we have something like a button click happen, um, it will generate these functions for us. We call them events because they're special functions that will fire when the user does something. Um, and they're a great way of us packaging up code to have it happen all at once. So what happens when this button gets clicked by the user is it will call this function and execute everything inside of it. And wouldn't it be great if we could somehow reuse all of that code in multiple places um, and not have to copy and paste. And we can. And it turns out that although Visual Studio will generate these functions for us automatically when we're in the designer and we double click stuff, we can actually write our own. And so what we want to do is right before your button submit click code, place your cursor and we're going to hit the enter key a couple times and make ourselves some space. And just like we did our constant declarations outside of all the other functions are, um, and within this class, we want to do the same thing when we write our own function. And we already kind of have some examples that we can copy off of. So we're just going to copy. We're going to say private, because this is private, space void. And now here's the fun part. We can call our function anything that we want. We're the boss, we get to be in charge. We don't have to call it button submit underscore click. But what we do want to do is we want to make sure we call it and talk about exactly what it is that we're doing. And in this case, we're talking about all this code that we keep repasting. And so what that is, is that code is updating 
what the price is. So we're going to call it update capital U price. Now this is the name and then you'll see that there's some there's some stuff after this. Well it turns out this is specific to when someone clicks a button or a checkbox and we don't have to use that stuff and more of that will become clear at a later point but what we do have to do is say open parentheses close parentheses hit the enter key and then we need an open curly brace and a close curly brace and now if we didn't do anything else we have our very first function although because there's no code in between these two braces um, it's not really doing anything so we have to resolve that I want this code to be what our update stuff is so going into my uh, button submit again I'm gonna drag over all the code making sure that I get in between the braces but not selecting the braces right click copy and then right click paste and so all the code that's in between this function is now part of my update price function so I need to have a way of calling this now and that's the kind of language that we use when we talk about using functions is that we are calling it and where do we want to call it well we wanted to call it pretty much everywhere where we copy and pasted that code in so the first thing I think we want to do is we want to take what was in our button submit because we moved it into our function now I'm gonna drag all of this again taking care not to select the open curly brace and the closed one and I'm gonna hit my delete key and I'm gonna clear that out and since we moved that code into a function now instead I want to call that function so we can remember we named it update price because it's a function we have to put that open and close curly brace as action where it's going to do something for us and now what happens is when they click button submit it's going to say oh yeah you want to you want to use update price it'll go up to where we have our function defined and it's going to execute all this code for us and so this looks quite a bit better than all of this that's happening but before we go and commit ourselves any further let's run it and see what happens we didn't do it on these yet that's okay I'm gonna just hit button submit and it worked it worked the same way before so now what we want to do is we want to take this line and anywhere that we had copied and pasted that old code I'm gonna replace it with this single line instead so on check lettuce changed paste check cheese changed paste and then lastly on check onions changed paste and let's try it out we know submit works so now okay that went up to 6 650 675 650 six dollars back to five and it looks like it's working so this is great what's happening here well we just vastly simplified our code we know that every time the user clicked the button or every time the user went in and checked or unchecked a checkbox we wanted to update that price so we put all of the code in the same spot and now if I wanted to add another checkbox I only have to do it in one spot inside the function that's going to be reused by all of those places and I think now what we can actually go in and do is we can remove that submit button because it was sort of redundant and then go into our code and delete the submit button click as well so now what we have is actually a nice real-time app that will update the price as we do it this is great I think also what we should do is um, on our page load so I'm gonna double click anywhere I'm gonna clear off that price as well I'm 
run it again and there we have it a nice app doesn't require any sort of button click or anything it just updates as it gets clicked and I think one thing to, to note here is that every time you check or uncheck a checkbox it's technically recalculating out this price and that's okay uh, computers are very good at doing the math they don't mind doing things repetitiously um, we as the users are the ones that like to be efficient when we're writing our code so three events all calling the same function so really this function is is the core of our application this is where the things are are happening for us and so what have we talked about well we talked about using a checkbox going after the dot checked property on it which is going to be true or false if using inside of an if statement because this evaluates out to true or false and then taking that and adding it to an existing total doing that three times and then lastly doing the functions and typically functions are introduced later but uh, it makes sense at this point because you won't really get how to use functions until you start practicing and seeing how efficient they can be in your code anytime you find yourself copying pasting more than two or three lines of code um, you should start telling yourself hey this might be a great candidate for a function right now at this point the key concept of a function and when to use a function should be the idea of reuse what code can I be reusing instead of copying and pasting uh, and this is a great candidate for it but functions are extremely powerful um, in fact whereas before we were using more primitive concepts of programming languages now we're technically into functional programming um, which was a huge leap when it came to programming um, in its early stages so this is this is great try and look at your applications and see where can I use functions to make my code a little more efficient uh, and to make them easier to read as well